Rain Maida is the first to tell you that he doesn't wake up every day ready to save the world. He just tries to do his own small part. Rain is the founding member of one of Canada's most successful bands. That would be Our Lady Peace. He's a sought-after singer-songwriter, co-wrote and produced this one for Kelly Clarkson. And as he's grown as an artist, Rain has tackled some bigger questions. Culturally, politically, socially, it's all in there. He's an avid supporter of War Child, and now the rock star who takes on politics can be asking for trouble. Look at how Bono regularly takes a kicking for it, and Rain's honest about that fine line between artist and pretentious. Still, he rallies behind the causes he believes in, even if it's unpopular with his fans. Now, it does help that he has the support of his wife and partner, fellow Canadian singer-songwriter Chantal Kravyasik, and together, they're intent on raising their kids to be globally minded. Might explain why Rain was toting a seven-year-old around the Occupy protests in Los Angeles. He's been a staunch supporter since the beginning. OLP even wrote a song that bears witness to the movement. And now that Occupy has been largely shut down, for now, Rain has some ideas on what perhaps could be done differently. Thank you. Good to see you. Very good. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. Hey, you have been great with this Occupy movement. Yeah, it's been fascinating. Talk it's been, um, you know, uh, I've been a like an, a huge Adbusters fan forever. It's, uh, you know, counterculture magazine from from uh, Vancouver, and I'm, I'm they're kind of the architects of this movement. I don't agree with some of the things that they've, they've done since the movement started, but I thought it was a great idea. You know, I thought it was very profound to kind of take on, you know, Wall Street and just, you know, f the kind of government and business ties that have gotten too tight over the years. And, and so I was, I was a f kind of a fan, and, and, and uh, I feel like I'm part of the 99%. You know, I know people disagree, and I've had fans definitely disagree. And tell me where to go, but <laughs> <laughs> I can I can take those punches. Yeah. But I, I I just I think you know it's an idea that kind of its time has come, hasn't matured the way I'd like to see it. You know, Cali um, his I think Adbusters take was it doesn't need leaders. Cali Lassen, right? Yeah. Cali Lassen, and I think the the problem is in my opinion, humble opinion, it needed leaders. You know, and I think that's part of one of the reasons. You know, it was it was kind of shut down in the parks. Mind you, it was getting cold as well, but it needed strong leadership. It's kind of like you gotta, you know, you gotta fight fire with fire. And the, I think the mainstream media was—it was very easy for them to kind of um, patronize it, to um, politicize it, and in some cases, like at UC Davis, to uh, pepperize it. You know, and they sure did. Crazy. Yeah. Do you talk to your kids about politics? I know they're young, but some of them—they're young. Yeah. I mean, I just—they I, were asking. More, you know, my my six-year-old Luke was just got tired during the march. We were in Los Angeles and we were marching, and it was—it was long, but. He was just, you know, moaning and bitching. And I said, you know what? These people are here for a reason. And one day you're gonna remember being here and the fact that you were engaged and you actually got off your butt and you and you got down there. And Did that's it work? that's all I think, yeah, I think he realized it, you know. He lasted for about ten minutes, but it <laughs> What is going on, what's going on with your records? There's a new OLP record. Is there a new solo as well for you? There's a solo record waiting. The OLP is kind of hijacked my solo record, which is fine, because um, we're really excited about this this OLP record. We started it about, I don't know, 12 or 13 months ago, and we, we, we went back down to my studio and started recording, and a friend of mine, Jason Later, who's, uh, we produce stuff together, and, and we've written together, and, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's the hipster guy in LA. He does, you know, he did like an Elvis Costello record and all the hip bands, but anyway, so we're sitting in my studio, and he said, how did they go with OLP last weekend? And I said, I think it went pretty well. I, I like a couple of the ideas, so I just played him two of the songs, and he sat there, with this dumbfounded look on his face, I said, "What's up?" You know, I was I start. I was getting nervous, and he said, "All the music that we trade and like and talk about, like this doesn't sound like any of that stuff. Why don't you guys make a record of music that you want to listen to?" And I was like, "Whoa!" Because no one probably said that to you. No one's ever said that to me. And I and I and I at first it was, you know, your ego is a little bruised, but I was like, "Yeah, you know what?" It's time. It's like we own everything. We're doing this on our own. We don't have to answer to an A and R person or a record label or a management. It's just about the four of us. And so, we scrapped everything, brought Jason in the room, and we've been doing a record with him. And it's, it's, it's the first time in a while where we felt like we've really challenged ourselves and, and raised the bar. And, and it's a very artistic and, and hopefully interesting record. Do you think about, you know, we're conditioned to believe in this idea of failure. 
and afraid to fail. Well, I'm not afraid to fail. I've done that many times. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I mean, and I, 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 I say that, you know, not sarcastically. It's true. I think you have to. That's the only way you can kind of learn, you know, and I love the peaks and valleys of, of life, whether it's, you know, a marriage, kids, or, or music. You all, you know, you can only appreciate the highs when you, when you sink into those lows. You do a lot of partnerships. You and your wife, Chantal Korbiatsik, just won uh, got a humanitarian award, right? This Alan Slate Award. What does that mean to you? Those are tough, you know. We don't deserve those things. There's it's called there's the Humanitarian people. Spirit Award, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's people around us. We're, yeah. Those. It's an honor, and and obviously we're very grateful to win um, those types of awards. But um, it's just they're uncomfortable. They're like skinny jeans for me. <laughs> Do you look good in skinny jeans? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably won't look good standing up there accepting this award either. But. How different would your life have been if you had become a, you know, you did, went to U of T criminology, right? I did, yeah. What would your life have been like? Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm still in criminology. It's, <laughs> it is the music business, right? It sure is. It's full of criminals, but, um, so I guess it was a good training. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know what, for me, it was like I was taking political science and economic classes and wasting my parents' money. So I walked into a criminology class and they were studying a, a Ted Bundy book and analyzing it. And I guess I've always, I like the analytical nature of analyzing someone's psyche, you know, because I do it to myself a lot and I do it through my lyric writing. And, and so that, that was attractive to me and so it kept me in school, which was good. A lot of the musicians you love listening to wrote songs about other things, talk about political engagement. Do you like writing songs about other things? I was thinking about in relation to the Occupy movement, guys like Tom Morello were there, Gordon Lightfoot was there, mm -hmm. you know, Musician tour about something as well. Do you like going out in that road as, a, as an artist? I, yeah, I mean, I take it a step back where I'm just about that as a human being. You know, those things, those are things that are important to me, whether I was, you know, working on a construction site, which I did for a lot of, a lot of my childhood, or, you know, uh, an accountant. I just think that's part of my thing is, and, and maybe it does stem back from seeing those concerts with the Gabriels and, and those people that were advocates for different causes, but it's just part of me as a human and as a citizen. So I like to think that that's why it translates into music. It's not some Machiavellian thing where I'm trying to posture, you know. I don't think Rage was. Those were smart guys, you know. It's like they had something to say. I wish they were still around today. Have you, have you run across musicians who were opportunistic about those sorts of events? I just think the culture that we live in today is all about that. It's like it's more about the brand and you try to fit the pieces of the puzzle of your brand. And these days, a social cause, you know, is that corner piece, unfortunately. And so a lot of it's really contrived and I want to throw up. So when people, you know, kind of take shots at me, I get it. I, I understand it, you know. If you sat down at the table and we had a beer together, I think you'd, you'd find something different. But I, I, from, from a distance, I, I totally get it. I know, even though you live in Los Angeles, I know you are a Toronto boy and forever will be. So in your heart, what did you think in your head as well when you heard that Rob Ford became the mayor of Toronto? Well, I used to play street hockey with Rob Ford. That's why I asked. You know, yeah, I mean. <laughs> when you were kids. <laughs> yeah, we live, we live like, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, a few streets away from each other. And there's this gang of us and we'd always hang out. And um, he was a little bit more svelte back then. Um, but, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't talked to Rob for ages, but I, you know, I, there's, there are a few stories, politics aside, there's a few human stories that, that I really like about him, and a, and a, a, a very close friend of mine still um, did some, some work for him, some, some canvassing for him, and it was up on Dixon Road around Lawrence. Um, big, um, you know, um, I think Somalian community up yep. there, and they were going through the buildings, you know, and and talking to people, and at every door they knocked on, and they mentioned they were doing, you know, they were for Rob Ford. Those people were very, very supportive, and they said, you know what, he calls me back. Mm -hmm. And when I think about politicians these days, and, and you know, the, you talk about transparency and accountability, you know, for better or for worse, and, and you could debate this f all week, there is accountability mm -hmm. with that man. What kind of road hockey player was he? I don't know, I, I think he was, he was, uh, I mean, I was average, so he was probably a little above average. Yeah, you actually you have a song as well for the Occupy movement, which is called Fight the Good Fight, which is now available online for free, so uh, go check it out. Ray Mayday, everybody. We'll be right back.